participants uh, welcome to this second session of day 3 and uh, we have uh, mr venkateshan prabhu as guest speaker for the session uh, we already had an impressive session yesterday from him uh, for python installation for your data science and uh, we have him again for uh, data science in max and uh, feature selection uh, for uh, participants who have joined newly today right so to let you know about um, mr venkateshan prabhu so his CEO of Kashyap Infotech, and uh, he has 10 years of IT field experience, and he has worked in various countries like US, UK, Japan, and Australia, and he has 13 international awards. He has seven national awards, and he has five historic achievements. Right, and he has done a lot of certifications like CCNA, MCP, MCAT. Right, so he is also a Microsoft Valuable Professional from the year 2008 to 2018. and he has done enormous project and lot of projects that is useful to our society so we are happy to have him again for the session and a happy learning the session is yours sir. thank you yeah uh, thank you sir like uh, <laughs> thanks for giving the great introduction about me okay so here is on the future selection area we are going to discuss today okay so like uh, yeah let's move on to the session so we are going to talk about the initial introduction of data science see yesterday like um, in the like uh, uh, in the agenda of the program of this fdp program like uh, i specified that uh, the implementation of uh, like uh, mathematics or uh, maybe like implementation of data science in the mathematics world that is a topic i give sir you will give some other topic and you started talking about python installation and other stuff why you didn't talk about mathematics that is a usual question you will have in your thoughts okay the reason is like uh, instead of jumping into the advanced concept uh, we need the base so i can't give a uh, like introduction to python why we need python installation of python is the first session they will laugh sir it's a it's a fdp program why you are giving this nonsense of basics and all sir but as a typical trainer uh, i am supposed to give some of the basic concepts like why we are doing this one so the next level is how we are doing so like uh, even the professor have arranged uh, this particular program here question me like sir why you given this one that the topic is different so like i couldn't i couldn't express it to him so that's like i keep mom because i want to continue the things in this session so whatever things i have told you yesterday okay so whatever things i told you yesterday i'm going to cover it today itself don't worry okay yesterday is a free session for you <laughs> okay let's move on what is versus even i was uh, confused what is versus man so i'm going to talk about what is this machine learning and data science okay so what is the differences okay how we the technology are differentiated let's say one guy who asked me a question sir what is the difference between artificial intelligence and data science everything is like a given in this particular session do not worry you will enjoy it okay now let's talk about this machine learning and data science before that you should understand about uh, some of the basic concepts of technology see actually i'm running a company kasho infotech So my company, Kashu Infotech, I want to spread the information. Hey, I'm doing internships. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm giving trainings and I'm doing a lot of research. I'm doing a lot of web designings. So I'm doing marketing or something like that. So for doing for for taking your business to the next level, you need to understand the customer. You have to define what is the standard of this company. Define the metrics that matters. asking good questions make it actionable it's nothing but your survey if anyone related to mba or bcom people you know the value of surveying which is which is which will try to get the pulse of the customer and translate for non technical audience these are all considered as a marketing strategies by the companies every company in the world including crescent your crescent got a entry banner right your dp program by crescent that is a marketing strategy that college is doing and it's trying to show you like yeah this is the one this is a program we are conducting if they don't have the brochure no one will know it right obviously it is translating for the non technical audience too that 
percent is conducting this particular program okay so that is how your marketing strategy will be and the statistics hey percent have conducted this particular program previously how many people have attended what is the response what is the feedback everything we not some historical data we need the historical data additional advanced mathematics statistical packages experimental design and model fitting okay this is the program to whom like i need to give this program we need to fit that guy to make this program success that's why they will do a lot of statistical research hey there is a guy Venkat. this guy can do the program oh he, how much experience he got whether he can teach data science to the professors a high-end technological guy whether he can do some research so a guy is there like he's doing a phd work whether Venkat can feed him a data science specialization to a phd research scholar so everything they need to do statistics and over here we have to think about the coding part yes Venkat is a guy who can fit into this model but still whether this guy knows basic coding or not whether he can clarify the doubts for the people or not so we need a perfect guy who got a specialization in analyzing the customer's details under the previous experience and and, and you should have a specific particular technological specialization everything makes up we need it for a business okay the expertise of marketing and the coding knowledge is called data engineer that is a specific job and the statistics with the programming knowledge and automation automation and the previous experience based on the let me let me write some programming they call it as machine learning that is a predictive analysis your marketing statistics and the statistics marketing and the statistics will have the traditional research sir who is entering into traditional research sir so mba people see actually like um, i work in australia while working in sydney like uh, we got a team so actually like, I, I work for commerce bank so for the bank people these people will be there so we are the people so i am part of data engineer so we used to write the program based on the expectation of the customer and we will match everything hey like the customer is coming and he needs this particular application yes i can design it for him and that is a guy sitting who will do some automations for my project what kind of automation sir so this particular bank need an application i can feed it for this application we need the data from other banks in that case we need some other guy to do some automations or scripting to grab the information from there and to push it here that's why your machine learning specialist will be sitting in the next area and that is an mba guy the designation is called a business analyst he will check the pulse of the customers, get the statistics, analysis, and he will feed us the data engineers. Okay, and the specialization of traditional research, machine learning, and data engineer combined is called as the great world data science. Okay, so data engineers, CSE, IT, MCS will be coming to the picture. Machine learning, CSE, IT, everyone plus. Yeah, electronics guy, a yeah, mechanical guy, everything will come in this machine learning. Traditional MCOM, BCOM, BBA, MBA, these people come to the picture. So data science is a specialization field where anyone can enter the markets, any departments. So I mean history, BA history, sir. Do you have any scope? Yes, you are a traditional research guy. So data science is for everyone that is why the greatest like our data science is damn good and real famous so here is the one so yesterday one have one guy was asked a question sonal i guess the name she was asked a question to me like so what is the difference between artificial intelligence and data science okay here is the picture for her okay so we got the deep learning deep learning is nothing but i got this structure from this structure i will do some research with the structure i got some like a uh, uh, previous experience with the structure i got the previous experience you got your machine learning you got the machine learning with the statistical data maybe a structured or an unstructured data that is your data science and including these stuffs you got a lot of automations 
adds your artificial intelligence. So these are the major world in the market and you've got a lot of scope. The job opportunities are real huge. Yes. So you told about structure and unstructured, sir. What is this structure and unstructured? Structured data in the sense, see, like you went to your college and you are studying in a college. In the case, uh, the student will have so myself vintage and there is a professor here who is watching this program mr sayed and manoj so we three are students studying the college person in that case what happens like um, sorry what happens like uh Benkert is the person i got my uh yeah i got my marks okay i got my marks physics mark chemistry mark mathematics marks three subjects so because in this semester we got only three subjects over here we got Manoj the student name is Manoj he loves physics chemistry and mathematics he don't have any extra subject man Sayed is coming and you will have the same three subjects we don't have any additional subjects so three subjects is common for all these students that is your structured data the data is common for everyone your table your SQL table Whereas in unstructured data, the data is varied. The example is a big data. So in big data, what happened? Like you see, considering I got my WhatsApp, I got my mobile with WhatsApp. I got my mobile with WhatsApp. So in my WhatsApp mobile, in, in my WhatsApp, I got 100 messages, 13 groups, 10 status, 10 likes for my status. And, uh, um, I got I received a lot of messages. Maybe your Facebook is one of the best answer for you. So I got 10 friends, 20 likes, 15 shares, and I'm in 16 group. Okay, so this is my Facebook profile. So considering Manoj is the, the guy, like a, the professor who is watching this program from Crescent. Okay, he got 15 friends, 16 likes, 17 shares. Syed sir is there. He got 25 friends, 30 shares. Hey, everyone got different data, man. How come you can store this data? That's where your big data comes to the picture. So the data is unstructured. Unstructured. I can't tell, hey, Venkat got only 10 friends. Hey, Mano, you should have only 10 friends, man. How come it's possible? He can have 15 friends because it's social networking. So once a social network comes, unstructured data comes to the picture. So this guy, data science, Will handle the structure and unstructured that's why the difference between the data mining and data science data mining will work mostly on structured whereas data science will work on structure and unstructured data this is how your normal world is you are able to see you got the unstructured unstructured data where this can be processed and it is made as a structured data over here, we got the structured data. From there, we are able to get a lot of unstructured data. From there, we can create an intelligent system. Intelligent system. If for this one, for this one, what is the data? So this is a concept used in Google Maps. Until Google Maps works with the data science concepts. Data science. Yes. So here is the differences between the data science, data analysis, big data, data analytics, data mining, and machine learning. Over here, you got the data mining. I got the data. I process the data. From there, I'm doing, I'm trying to like, um, like uh, finding a knowledge system. Creating a knowledge system is called as data mining. From this knowledge system, I'll do a lot of research to come up with some different thing. That is called analytics, data analytics. Okay. So from this data analytics, I'm trying to get some other information, the prediction in different world. That is your data analysis and handling your structure and unstructured with the data analysis, analytics and mining is called as data science. Handling only the unstructured data in an efficient way, that is your big data, 
and your intelligence is your machine learning which i've told you before itself so i couldn't understand between this analysis and analytics analytics in the sense considering like um, i created a structure so crescent college be third year student cac department how many students are there yes i got the data hey i don't want this absent this man remove it man yes remove hey i don't want uh, this one like uh, um yeah remove the like uh, absentees and everything i don't want the zero like I, that is a guy who got zeros huh, in the marks i don't want that guy i removed that one now i got the data with the condition the student should not be zero and apart from that the student should, the student should not be zero and apart from that like uh, that should not be null value this kind of cleaning is done with the data mining from there i started doing your professor is coming hey venkatesh you want the male candidate only man oh sir you want the male candidate how many male and female you want ha oh, sir 10 males sir 20 female candidates are these sir oh 10 20 that's good i want uh, an analytics report uh, hey i want one the chennai base and out of chennai base man so let me analyze it yes so the analytics report is the analytics report is okay so 20 people are from chennai sir the rest of the people are from outside chennai sir that is your analytics the data mind data the mind data from there i have done some analytics from there i move to the next level in this one hey venkat so 20 people have done the pro like program in our college that's awesome man now i want a bit more condition the condition is like uh, next year <coughs> <coughs> how many people from chennai will join analysis will come to the picture data analysis will come to the picture so data science is the world where it can do cleaning up creating analytics a lot of analysis and structured and an unstructured data that's how the best is this is awesome technology you should learn it and you should build your profile and you may ask me a question sir you are like a teaching data science so we can learn data science the recent terminologies and technology that's awesome sir what else we can do oh. can you believe a professor with almost uh, some 10 years of experience with the data science there is a huge scope in the markets the minimum salary for the professor or for the pro professional with the 10 years of experience maybe like a more than five years is more than enough data mining knowledge with the data science knowledge bit of big data python programming so let me start from first knowledge and python programming plus machine learning plus r programming plus data mining plus data science if you got this five knowledge this five knowledge with at least some three to four or maybe a five if it is 10 years that's great five years of experience the professor with the five years of experience the minimal salary is minimal of 3.5 lakh in india the minimal salary is 1.5 lakh because data science has got a huge scope huge scope okay and every highest paid salary is for data science in the current it trend 2020 the highest paid salary is for data science people okay and doctorates so five years is more than enough and doctorates phd the people pursuing phd or the people finish the phd they are getting minimal salary of 4.5 lakhs just go to google search for the salary for data science job the market is real open the real open yeah so, and uh, data science in middle east and us oh yo you can't predict uh, <laughs> the salary okay skills percentage if you want to be a data specialist you should have like have 20 percent of computer science knowledge statistical mathematics knowledge of 19 percent 
economics and social science 90 percent data sciences and analysis 13 percent natural sciences 11 percent engineering nine percent and rest of the technical knowledge and experience is nine percent you may ask me sir how come sir so i'm a guy teaching or i'm a guy with a to have computer science knowledge how come i can have knowledge in social science and everything physics chemistry biology i i, I studied in my school's days <laughs> how can you remember sir that is your question so it's, it's 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 not mandatory that you should have this much knowledge to become a data science specialist it is like a, if it if you got this knowledge it's awesome if you doesn't have the knowledge also if we, i don't know this like economics and other stuff so i don't know problem, no problem be strong in data mining processing your data ah, you are a data science specialist yes uh, this is how the job opportunities are the top 20 emerging jobs whatever 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 job is they are behind data science and machine learning so these are the people dominating the industry dominating the industry and professors like i'm not sure how much how many professors are here in this group professors of the data science you got awesome opportunity awesome opportunity because 90 percent 99 percent of the professors they don't know the scope of professors in data science world the companies are so actually like i work in excel technology um so i'm a project manager above project manager we got like a senior project manager above senior project manager we got uh, uh like uh, i forgot it like uh, we got uh, uh we got uh, almost from a from project manager six position top six position top from project manager okay uh, you can you, you are with me so i'm i'm telling you project manager i got almost uh, I'm telling before before 10 years before 10 years because i started my company at 11th year it's my 11th year running my company before 10 years i got a salary of almost almost one lakh in hand like 97 98 000 approx at that time at that time before 10 years i'm telling 10 positions top 10 six position top there is a business unit head where almost some uh, 60 project managers are reporting 60 project managers are reporting you can predict how much the salary that guy is getting he is a professor our business unit head is a professor worked in the college and he got the specialization at the time before 10 years data mining is greater it is dominating the industry he, he is a data mining specialist working in a college and he's a business unit head in our company that is the scope of the technology okay anyway now let's talk about uh, this data mining and data science in depth extracting the data discovering the hidden patterns developing the predictive world that is a data mining over here your data science includes in addition to this all the stuff in addition to it it got manipulating the unstructured data multidisciplinary you can use it in lots of fields no it's not lots and lots of no no no, no. My, my 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 point is wrong it is used in all fields everywhere everywhere okay qualitative analysis also can be done yes so here is the scope of data science so data you got lots and lots of uh, opportunities here and you got the content so in the web mining areas in the web mining areas uh, data science dominating the industry okay so your google is working with only with data science your youtube is working with the data science yes we got a lot of theoretical stuffs yeah let's talk about this data science history and afterwards we'll move on to the practical parts today i'm having all sorts of theoretical part man okay let's talk about the history of data science uh, so how come the history of data science starts? John Wilder Turkey. So he's the guy who introduced a statistical model. Okay, statistics. The previous experience, everything I collected it. Hey, like uh, 10 years before, Kurson got 100 students. Uh, nine years before, Kurson got uh, maybe like uh, 120 students. Eight years before, you got uh, 200 students. That is your statistics. 
So John Wilder to K, this is a guy, he decided, hey, you need this statistical data, man, to do some processing. Okay, in 1974, Peter Nahr. So he's a guy, he wrote a computer method survey with a data science kind. Hey, data science is the one you should know it, man, to do some research. From there, once again, you are 1977, John Wilder to K itself. So this guy, he started testing it like um, he collected the data. He started doing a lot of exploratory data analysis and investigation. This is the first world or first point in the data science world. From there, like a 1989, Grigori Piatsky Shapiro. So he arranged a knowledge discovery. So, so this guy, like a coin data science, this guy started doing like a this guy started doing like an exploratory data analysis and everything from there shapiro found like a, hey we got the data we explored the data from this exploration can i discover something can i discover something that's how you are 19 in 1989 knowledge discovery comes sir i didn't understand sir i didn't understand see you got the data like a recent college this when this particular store like as um, in, in this particular table I, and in this particular class, I got 20 girls and 20 boys. Among that, how many students are damn good? How many students are weaker? The reason is like, I want to focus on the weaker section, man. I want to focus on the stronger section to make it more better. I want to focus on the weaker section to make it better. We need this knowledge discovery that is created in 1989. From there, like uh, the next. So research started in 1994, like a Business Week magazine. They introduced database marketing in 1994. Database marketing? Yes, obviously. You collected the data. You collected the data. So obviously, every college people, they will collect this a plus two student database, and they will talk to the people. They will do some SMS or something like that. They will do marketing for the admissions. That is your marketing. So it is introduced by Business Week in 1994. In 1999, Jacob Zahavi. So he come up with uh, like integration of hardware too. Okay, so we need some integration. Um, what can I do? What can I do? Yes, I got that. Uh, like, uh, see, like I got a uh, yeah, pulse or uh, maybe, uh, maybe like uh, you'll be having a heartbeat monitor. Which is which is a heartbeat monitor which is next to the patient it is a heartbeat monitor is there based on the heartbeat monitor automatically the glucose moving up to the patient is controlled it's a kind of an iot component so integrating your data science specialization into the hardware that is how in 1999 jacob zahavi comes into the hardware device concepts in 2001 william cleveland so he explained how to expand this specialization into an information investigation. Okay, so you got a data, you discovered the data. Hey, what you'll do with this data, man? I need to do some investigation for future research. Sir. That is, it's done in 2001. Once again, Shapiro, or oh, it's, it's uh, strong, like it's previous one. Anyway, like uh, now, from there, like I got the data. Audible, I audible, the data. Please check your Hello? mic. You are not audible. No, sir. Uh, he's uh, audible. He's no, audible. audible. Yeah. Continue, sir. Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. And I voice not audible. Yeah, like. Uh... No, sir. You are audible, sir. Continue, sir. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The reason is like, no, I increase the volume, volume like a speaker also now. No, Nandu, are you, are you able to hear me now? Nand, Nand, oh, Nand Kumar Mishra. Are you, are you, are you able to hear me now? Um, guys, you have disconnected, sir. He will rejoin again, sir. 
we can yeah, yeah 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 sure yeah yeah thank you sir yes any feedback yeah yes yes more uh guys uh, uh like uh, uh, like uh, how much time you want me to proceed uh, my food feel like are you people feel too boring or you want some break or something like that i shall i proceed guys are you with me yes sir yes sir now audible see 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 see, see. actually in my question is uh, uh, my question is like um, are you okay with the session like uh, like uh, because it's a lengthy session i'm teaching to you people do you feel boring or uh, you want me to like uh, cut short somewhere or shall i proceed uh, you can proceed sir, sir please proceed it's a very plan. interesting it's a very interesting session sir please proceed okay very excellent session sir thank you uh, there is a comment we shall move on to hands on in chat sir ah yes okay uh, over here like uh, we got in 2006 uh, like uh, we got the hadoop platform so in hadoop platform like uh, they started like uh, integrating your in the data science they started integrating your non-structured data also okay in 2008 the titled data scientist comes to the picture in 2008 you know, 2011 2012 data scientists are increased by 15000 percent 15000 percentage man 15,000 unpredictable, unpredictable, 15,000 percentage. Okay, this is how the data science world is. Okay, so it's the theoretical part is over. So it's going to be the real boring session once again because I'm going to enter into the practical part. Data science in the machine learning and mathematics world. So like uh, matrix is one of the major area in mathematics with data science and machine learning makes a very important role i'll show you like how this mathematics has done with the simplified format so i got your one dimensional array and a two dimensional array the combination of three into 13 3 into 13 4 into 8 2 into 6 so this is how it will have a lot of so you are able to see it here i'm doing, trying to do some animations here okay this is how the array manipulations are done so yeah, like you may ask me a question, sir. This can be done with the MATLAB also, sir. Yes, MATLAB is one of the powerful tool, but processing unstructured data is a key point. It can't do. It can't do. Okay, that's where your data science plays a very important role. Okay, so you got your matrix, um, your mathematical operations, which is made very simple. Like uh, it's equivalent to other languages. Okay, let's see. So I got here, like I got, I'm, I'm, I'm going to write the code. So this is the code, import numpy as np. You got your vector a, sorry, it is too fast, sorry for that. Yeah, vector a, np dot array of one comma, two comma, three. Since it's a very different animation, I, I tried it, so sorry for that. So it will, uh, like uh, continuously will be coming up. Okay, so you got two arrays, vector a, vector b, np dot dot of vector a and vector b will give the outputs or vector a out of vector b so you got two alternatives to do mathematical operations yeah where is everything is inbuilt everything is inbuilt okay you need to call that method to do some processing okay this is how your mathematical operations will be done with uh, the machine learning and data science world Yes. So here is the tools we should explore and we should know for data science and artificial intelligence. So as I told you, I, I previously have told about AI, machine learning and data science. I don't want to like uh, waste my time and waste your time. So uh, we'll talk about the popular tools over here. TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, Keras. And uh, over here, you've got Amazon Lex, Scikit-Learn, IBM Watson, Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Studio. Over here, you got SAS, Tableau, Apache Spark, MATLAB, Big ML. Okay. In data science, forget about MATLAB. Forget about MATLAB. I'm coining you. Forget about MATLAB. Over here, in AI, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, Keras. Learn all the three technologies. 
in machine learning scikit learn is awesome scikit learn is awesome i'm a great fan of scikit learn okay i love like all oh, tensor flows uh, like these are awesome technologies i love it i used to implement a lot of things with these days and in data science tablia is great now tablia is great if you're an mba or bcom or a, a kind of management guy go with the tablia for the professors tablia is great okay talking about the applications over here automatic chatbots Okay, no, just go to my kashiwinfo.com, my website. If you go to kashiwinfo.com, like uh, if you open the website itself, there is an automatic chat window will come. Hey, welcome to our company. Like, uh, what do you want or something like that? You'll be getting automated chats. But still, it is a normal automated, not normal chat. Uh, you just go to paypal.com, paypal.com. In the customer care, Whatever questions you are typing it based on the question, automatically the chat will be coming up. It is an automated chat, man. Awesome, man. Awesome. I love it. PayPal.com. They have done a great, great A chat bars. Awesome. PayPal.com. Customer service. Chat window. Awesome. And you try my chat window. The basic chat window is there. My website, Kashinwood.com. A basic chat window will be there. And an automated chat window is also there. PayPal.com. Chat bars. Cyber security. Ayo, I deleted the email. Are you able to see my email? Yes, sir. Guys? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You can see it here. So I got an email yesterday. Yesterday night, 15 hours ago. 15 hours ago. We have detected a suspicious email sent to your Google account. Hi, Wiki Tiki. Our systems detected that a suspicious mail was sent to your Google account. It likely from the mail address you don't know on me. This is the mail from YouTube. As you people know, I got a channel, Wiki Tiki channel. So from like for that, we got a suspicious email. And this is where your cyber security comes. So YouTube is using an artificial intelligence. Voice assistant. Healthcare, wherever you go, like healthcare and all, you got your artificial intelligence. Machine learning, autonomous driving. So like a driverless cars. Recommendation system. Oh, this is very, very important. I'll teach you. Recommendation system. See, data science is used by this guy, Amazon. Amazon is using data science. See, okay, I can show you a price. You can see it here. Price near me. So over here, I got the laptops and everything here. And apart from that, near me in the sense like a near to me, what are the shops are available? It will try to fetch it. That is how your recommendation system and the e-commerce options will be working in data science and machine learning world. You got your facial recognition, that's a usual concepts. You got your fraud and risk detection. You got the healthcare analysis. So these are the areas where they are focusing more. So you may ask me, sir, I couldn't understand, sir. I'm trying to tell you, the, in these industries, the op job opportunities are really huge. <laughs> okay. Yes, let's talk about the future selection now. Okay, so futures. Actually, like uh, in Python, you got two different types of data sets. The one is inbuilt data sets. The other one is like you can take it. So I got a external sites. 
a Excel UCA kind of repository for my research. I collected the data sets, sir. Yes, you can collect the data sets. You can load it, man. Yes, that's good. No, sir. I don't want to collect the data set. Do we have any inbuilt data sets? Yes, it's there. So like uh, that is an inbuilt data set. I'm going to use it. I'm going to teach you about the feature selection. So we like uh, the Python program, the Python environment, Jupyter, they use almost, this is your iris flower. This is your petal and this is a sepal. They collected 150, 150, 150 iris flowers of three different species. Iris setosa, Iris versicolor, Iris virginica. Okay, setosa, versicolor, virginica with a count of 15, 15, and 15. And this is the data set I got. You got four futures taken, sepal length, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. You got the species. If you got this sepal length with the sepal width, with the petal length and petal width, it's called iris setosa. If you got this one and this one and this one, this one combination is iris setosa. If it is a different data, it can be iris versicolor or iris virginica. So for machine learning world, you will be having two things. The one is futures, the other one is targets. The one is futures, the other one is classes. So what is this? Uh, see, I'm hitting it like this. I'm hitting like this. Hey, you have to move like this, man. Move left. Hitting it, move left. Hitting it is data or futures. Move left is your classes. Hit it, move right. Hitting it is futures and moving this side is your classes. What is the action taken? That is your classes, our targets. Okay, over here. I got my iris data sets. As I told you, the data sets can be accessed by Python from the inbuilt data sets. Uh, it can be extracted via the external data sets. We got the external files. So the, the code is like a data sets dot load iris in. So where is the data set, sir? Data set is the functionality which is available in the scikit-learn, sklearn. Okay, over here, you got the data sets from the external file. So pandas is the one, pandas is yeah, like, a, yeah, like a, a tool, a handy tool, which is used. You may ask, sir, import pandas as pd? What is as pd? Vengadesan Prabhu is my name. Hey, don't call Vengadesan Prabhu. It's a true name, man. True big man. Vengadesan Prabhu. Hey, why you are calling me big name, man? Call me Venkat, man. Oh, that's awesome, man. Call me Venkat. Short name. So don't call me Pandas. Call it as PD. Enough, man. So PD dot underscore read CSV. Sir, I don't have the... This is CSV. It's not even comma separated file. So I don't have a comma separated file, sir. I got an Excel file. Huh? Read underscore XLS. <laughs> The coding is very simple. The coding is very simple. So whatever file name is like, just give it, it will load the external data sets to do some processing. Okay. So this is how you are able to use the data sets to do your research. Now, over here, I got the iris data. So as I told you, you got two things, futures, the other one is targets. Futures or data classes, data targets. So you may ask me, sir, uh, I got the raw data, sir. The raw data is uh, not, it's, it's not clear, sir. Can I customize it? In that case, your pandas will have data frames. Data frames is very, very important while doing your processing. So, 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 leave it, leave it. No, 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 I want, what is this future, sir? What you are teaching now? Tell me first. <laughs> See, like once, if you start doing your research, you need the data. I collected the data before putting into the research to do some processing you need to pre-process the data the data mining sorry data mining now I'm teaching that nonsense data mining man very simple I'm teaching data mining pre-processing the data before applying it sir I got uh, rice sir. I got the rice with me 
So before boiling it, I'll wash it in water and I'll remove all the stones, unwatered stuffs. Now I got the good rice, man. Take the rice, put it in the boiled water to get it boiled. I'll eat it. Removing all the unwanted stuffs before boiling the rice is called as pre-processing in data science. Okay, now I got the rice with a lot of stones and everything, man. Only rice, I will take it. I got a lot of futures, only very specific features, I will take it. Okay, that is how I'm going to tell you, like how it's concerning four futures of the sepal and sepal with the petal and petal. Array. Why you are using four futures, man? This is taking a lot of time. Let's pre process, make it as two futures, man. Ah, it's possible. That is the one we are going to see now. Pre processing or mining of data is done in this particular program. The next, ah, it's 12 30 now. Hmm. The next level of, uh, uh, I'll take another. So probably I'll take another 15 minutes of uh, session and uh, the rest of the session, can I continue with tomorrow, sir? Yeah, okay, sir. Yeah, because uh, I think uh, I, like, uh, <laughs> I've expected to finish it, uh, but it looks like it's a lengthy session for me. Anyway, so like um, probably like, we can plan for another 15 minutes of session. So uh, and afterwards, like uh, we'll, we'll stop it there. And uh, the same continuation will be continued in my next session. Don't worry. I'll cover it up everything for you. Whatever things I've told you, like I've committed for this particular program, you will get everything. Okay. Sometimes I need to like uh, explain you more. So that's why like uh, it's taking a lot of time. Okay. So as I told you, like I got the Iris data set. You got the data and the targets. A customizable format is called as data frame. Data frame. Okay. So for this data frame, to create the data frame, you need data and the column name. I'll teach you those stuff. Yes. Over here, I got the data set details further. So here is the data. So I what is the data? Petal length, petal width, sepal length, sepal width. This is the data. I got. You can see it here. Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, species. You can see if you go if you got a five with the 3.5 with 1.6 or 0 0.6, I the setosa, the target is zero. So for setosa is zero, for versicolor is one. For the next one is two. Okay. To access this data set, we need this code. So from SQL learn import data set yes learn is a powerful data science and machine learning library from there the sub library is called the data sets now i got iris as a variable so the second line sir i don't want now i don't want now i don't want now just leave it so i got the iris data sets data sets dot load iris hey Use this sub library to load your iris data set and store it here. Now, iris.data, I stored it in X. What is this iris.data, sir? Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. You can see the four data. Guys, you, if, if any of you people are doing your PhD in data science, this is the one you have to learn it. This is the base. Okay, anyway. So like, and apart from that, like if you are planning to do any PhD work, so you can contact me, I'll surely guide you. So because like I used to guide a lot of uh, uh, PhD work, almost uh, some eight to more than 10 journals are published in Annexure 1. Okay, more than 10, more than 10, more than 10. Annexure 2, it's usual for me. Okay, I'm not supposed to show the documents like how the PhD should be done. So maybe like uh, maybe just contact me in future like uh, I can show you a template of how your yeah, PhD journal needs to be created and IEEE or else a paper can be created with the research. Okay, anyway, like uh, I'll continue here. So like iris the data you got this data here, and this is the target value. This is the target value. Zero indicates iris setosa. One indicates versicola. Or here it is called iris dot targets. So this is the data I got. 
this is the data for this particular row this zero is a value for this particular row zero is a value for this particular row zero is a value iris setosa for this particular row this is a value okay so this is called as a future names petal and sepal and everything is future names and this is called this is these are called as target names iris dot target names or setosa versicola and genica sir everything is good sir i took the data set i seen the data i took the column name pakka sir now i want to customize it into an understandable one sir raw data sir what i will do with this raw data sir can i do some processing are you superb man or zero one two three how many data sets what are the columns pakka man that is your pandas data frame so import pandas as pd so pandas dot data frame is a method and this is the data and this is the columns and this is the columns once we give it you got the panda data frame so typing it you'll be getting this one yes now it's a bit more like a, a mathematical things i'm going to teach you <laughs> LDA, so linear discriminant analysis. Okay, what is linear discriminant analysis? Okay, so LDA is nothing but. Before that, I should understand about the principal component analysis. So data science involves mathematics and formulations. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about a lot of mathematics now. <laughs> Mathematics is allergic for most of the people. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, linear discriminant analysis is nothing but this is a technique of principal compound analysis. is a technique used to reduce the dimensionality of the columns. I got some 100 columns, sir. Processing the 100 columns is the toughest, man. Can you believe you an unstructured Facebook data? Oh, yo, you will die. While doing this processing, I have done a processing for, a, for one of the major web mining algorithm to implement it. I have done some processing. Oh, yo, it killed me a lot. It killed me a lot. So at the time, I didn't, I didn't find this kind of terminologies integrated to do some research. For one of the PhD research, what I have done, I am a stupid guy. I took all the columns and I started processing it. It took enormous amount of time, but I got the good data, but good results. But why should I do some processing that much, man? To arrange the same result, can I have the number of columns reduce? That can be achieved with PCE or LDA. A principal component analysis or yeah, like a linear discriminant analysis. What is the difference? Sir, I got the students' marks. Um, 10, 15, 16, 24, 38, 48, 64, 90. The variety of data. How much the data is deferred? Based on that, I can I can differentiate and show it. That is called a PCA. Separate it and show it. That is called LDA. Over here, only the differentiation is done. Over here, the separation, clear segregation is done. That is where the difference is. Okay. Okay. So, like as I told you, like you got the dimensional reduction technique. You can see it. This is your LDA. This is your LDA. Okay, I can separate the data. Sir, there are some blue color here, sir. Ah, no problem, no problem, no problem, ready be. But still, you are able to arrive with something because data mining or the prediction cannot be 99%. It can be 80%, 92%, 95%. Because flipping a coin, you can't expect that only head will come, man. That's a stupid thing, man. It's not possible. You can have anything, sir. The possibilities head is more for this coin. Possibility is more because I got some uh, something is at uh, touch with the uh, the head head part of the coin, sir. Okay. Anyway, so it's a pre-processing step, and uh, this is found in 1930s by Ronald A. Fisher, and it is called a Fisher's discriminant analysis. Yes. Instead of talking a lot of theoretical parts, I'll show you. I got iris data, we got four futures. So on four futures, I applied this linear discriminant analysis 
now from there i got only two futures and applying this one lda so linear discriminant analysis i'm able to apply on this one to get two futures so i got the number of column apply the mathematical formula to get your transformed data that is how your lda works yes now I'll talk about why this LDA, linear discriminant analysis. Now you are able to understand the reason why I didn't teach these tasks yesterday. So if uh, Syed said, Syed sir, Syed, Syed is a person, Syed Mohammed, he's a person organizing this particular program. So like uh, specifically, like if he requested, like I said, do you, you need to like, uh, you didn't uh, talk about mathematical things yesterday. If we talk about these things yesterday, um yesterday today i got some 122 participants are there at present now like if i teach this lda yesterday sir <laughs> not even 10 people will attend it sir <laughs> anyway that's why like i didn't sir, i didn't initiate this particular concepts yesterday sir okay anyway so lda um i uh, will have this lda explanation this one will talk about this lda works Yes, uh, maybe like I'll stop it here. Like I, I got some, maybe I can finish it. No problem. Like let me finish the session itself. I don't want to like uh, push it later. Yeah, probably like in the next uh, 15 minutes, I'll try to finish the session. Please bear with me, please. Uh, guys, can I continue? No problem. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is some person, Vijay Lakshmi, someone like uh, she's asking, like, uh, sir, can you give hands on? Yes, it's available. Don't worry. Don't worry. You will have it. No, you will have it. Okay. See, like, without explaining, this is where the biggest problem is. Like, uh, what you will do with this hands on, Vijay Lakshmi? What is what do you do with the hands on? Without see, this is the biggest problem. You will get the code everywhere. You you can't understand what is the code. No one is there to explain it. That is why you are attending this particular program. Hands-on is waste. Only if you are able to understand the concepts, the hands-on is useful. That is why I get this is like this is a vague area, but no one will teach you this stuff. Anyway, like it's like uh, Vijay Lakshmi, you will have the hands-on now. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'll 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 get it. Don't worry. So you got like I got the variety of data. See, like I'm trying to enter into a genetic engineering kind of concepts or in the medical field, how the research is done. Okay, so you know the genetic areas, like uh, if it's in the med medical field, I want uh, gene, uh, protein, data, and everything. It is enormous. Like I'm not sure whether you know about BioPython. There is a technology available for biology for the medical field. Uh, I love it. I love the technology. Okay, guys, like, uh, uh, like if, uh, including sales or someone like, uh, if you people are really interested in this area, like you can call me for some other session with uh, bio python and other stuff, which is awesome. Data science with bio python, oh, yo, you love it, you love it, you love it. That is really interesting. In health industry, data science in health industry is awesome. So I'm a specialist in that area. Anyway, like over here, you got your gene, you got your two dimensional data. You got your two dimensional data. Now, sir, like I, I want to segregate the data, sir. I want to segregate the data. I will draw a line over here. I can segregate the data. That's good. Sir, it is a three-dimensional data, sir. Three-dimensional data, sir. Small, small green, small green, small green, big green, big green, big green, small green. Well. Yeah, three-dimensional data, sir. Can I able to segregate it? It is very hard. It is four-dimensional. Oh, yo, five-dimensional. It's too tough, man. So that is where we need a multi-dimensional data. We can't process it. We can't process it. That is where we need some algorithm and mathematical, like uh, we need to apply some mathematics. Okay, here is the concept of LGA. Over here, you can see there are variety of data in two dimensional. Hey, reduce it to one dimension, man. Reducing the dimensionality higher dimension to lower dimension is called as LDA. 
applying this mathematical LDA on the futures is called future selection. And this future selection is the first step or part of data science. First 20% of data science is future selection, simple. Okay, over here, I got the case, can I have, instead of putting a line, the strike, can I have this kind of an alternative? Yes, you can do. So this is where the intelligence comes to the picture, where I need to draw the line to make it consolidated into a dimension, a single dimension or reduced dimension. You can see it here. The, it is joined here, joined here, joined here, joined here, joined here, joined here. You got this one. Now I reduce the dimension, sir. What the next step I'm going to do? So after reducing the dimension, you need to apply the mathematical formula. The mathematical formula is like the green color. What is the distance, man? This is the distance. The red color. How? What is the distance, man? This is the distance. And the mean, the mean, 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 center point, the center point, the mean of the green color, the mean of the red color. So this is the one or the difference between these two people whole square divided by the distances between these two, the distances or the length of these two added, you will get a value that is the LDA value. This is how your LDA works, linear discriminant analysis for sure linear discriminant analysis will work sir 10 columns sir 10 column consolidated into one column can be done with this concept this formula this is how the mathematics are applied on the data sense in the initial world itself uh. yes Yes, here is the one. You got the iris data. Iris data. I got the futures. Apply the linear discriminant analysis. You got two futures here. The transforming the iris data with LDA. Okay, that is the concept we are going to do. So that is called as X underscore LDA. So as we know, I'm going to talk about the same dialogues. So loading the iris data sets. Iris the data. Iris the targets. So try to understand very simple people, very simple. So I got the data, you got the algorithm, fit it, transform it. Your program comes. Okay, over here you got from sklearn, import data sets. sklearn.discriminant analysis, sklearn is the main library discriminant analysis is a sub library from there i'm trying to import the actual functionality linear discriminant analysis okay so i got the data load iris x will have sepal and sepal with petal and petal with data species target yes x and y is ready man now you got the formulation coming algorithm so linear discriminant analysis of sir four future is this how many you want man two ah ah n underscore compared zero two no sir four future merge it as one sir oh n underscore compared zero to one so i want three sir three can't be done because the number of species is versicola virginica and the other one setosa only three is there man so number of species minus one is the count it can be two or one okay my linear so the formulation algorithm linear discriminant analysis comes your data is comes fit it yes lda dot fit of x comma y transform it on what basis you want to transform man on the data on the data x value because petal length petal with sepal and sepal with i merge it as one number of futures okay x dot shape of one is four and number of futures is two now this two futures so four is coming apply lda make it as two future two futures are moving on for the research now i got only two futures for research yes now i got the x dot shape you can see it here the x dot shape 
you can see x dot shape is nothing but it got 150 column 150 row and only four columns that is the initial data and this is the data and applying the lda same 150 row but only two futures four column become two futures this is how your lda works yes Let's move on to the hands-on. So I took my anaconda environment here. Yes, I took the anaconda environment here. Mm -hmm. Let me take my uh, Jupyter notebook. Yes, let me take my new Python file. Yeah, I'll write the code here. So I want to save the file. The file name is ml-ds-ai. I stored the file as ml-ds-ai. From sklearn, I'm trying to import the data sets. Yes, the data set is ready. Ah, so. I think spelling mistake is there, so I need to check it out. It's small d. Yes. Sir, you may ask me a question. Sir, you can fix it and write the code, sir. You are doing mistake and you are rectifying it. Why? The reason is like I want to tell you one thing. So these are all the libraries you can't memorize. Even Venkat, I'm a typical data science specialist. Even I'm not aware of these things, man. I don't want to mug up things. It's a trial and error. Our Google is there for you. Relax. Okay, so you can see it here. I'm trying to do all, all the order. What is the sub library I got? I'm trying to do a lot of analysis to find the library. From see, I once again I'm telling you, I can I can type the like a, the code without any errors. I can type. I can type. I want to show you one thing. You must and you should get errors. Then only you will learn. You will learn. And like if you are filled with only data science, magabit. You don't have options. Or else Google is there. Search for linear discriminant analysis library. You will get these things. Don't worry. Okay. I got the library created. I got the load iris data sets done. Now I got the iris.data, iris.target. You got the LDA created with n underscore components. n underscore components is equal to two. That's good. Now we are going to apply. So library is there. The data is there. The library is there. The algorithm is there. Let's fit it and transform it. LDA dot fit of x comma y dot Transform. Oh, spelling mistake, spelling mistake. I didn't have transform. Spelling mistake. Yes, it should be transform. Ah, uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. I missed it. Sorry for that. Okay, let me fix it. Yes. Yes, transform. So fit it and transform it. Yes, this is your LGA basic components. So you got the LGA basic components. And now you got your x underscore LDA. X underscore LDA is the one I'm trying to. Oh, this is the data I got. This is the data I got. So on applying the algorithm, I got this x underscore LDA. X is this data, and x underscore LDA is that data. So applying the mathematical formulas on the data to get the, the to extract the exact data which is going to be processed. Okay, now I got this one. Now let me print the number of futures and everything. You can see the number of components I made as one. Number of components I made as one. So four futures I made as one. Now I make it as three. It should throw an error. Uh, yes, it's not throwing an error. Yes, yes, you can see it, it is while well, fitting it, it's throwing an error. It is indicating that you can't have three as a value. It should be three minus one can be two or can be one. Okay, it can be two or one. 
Okay, yes. Looks good. The X is coming. Yes. Now let me print it. So X dot shape. X dot shape is very, very important to find the shape. So because I'm not sure whether I got the same number of rows or any like any discardation of rows happen. Yes. 150 row, four column. Mm, paka, paka, paka. Now I'll go with this X underscore LDA dot shape. Let me check it out. 150 row, two column. That's awesome, man. Nothing has changed. Only the number of columns. The futures are reduced. That's good, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, I put it as shape. It is an array. So we should have a box bracket. We should have a box bracket. Okay, we should have a box bracket. Shape. Yes, it's four over here. Let me have the shape once again. Sure. Yes, it is two. That's that. This is the output we have expected. This data will be used for processing. So print off the existing futures count. So any idea, any anyone to tell me like what is the like our concatenation one plus, which is used in .NET? Maybe comma dot which one? It is comma. Okay, so like um, printing and appending the data in Python can be achieved with comma. Yes, I got the comma here. Okay, running it, you got the existing future count is four. And uh, the new future count, after putting the algorithms and mathematical formulation. <coughs> yes. X underscore LGE dot shape of will have the future as two. Okay, this is how the program works. So hope you learned today like how the number of futures are reduced. But still we got the data frames and other things. I think uh, it's already the lengthy session we made. So maybe by tomorrow like uh, we'll talk about uh, the data set details. And from there like we'll continue. Maybe by tomorrow afternoon I'll have uh, the same session, the continuous of this particular session. And we'll have a uh, model selection and other stuff. And uh, hope you enjoy the session today. Anyway, thanks for today's session. By tomorrow, you got more interesting on R programming. I'm a high-end specialist in R programming. You can you'll be enjoying my session. And by tomorrow, we got a lot of stuff like a model selection, other things are a lot of practical things are there. Tada! Bye. So thanks for watching this program. Thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful session, sir. Uh, participants, you would have loved this, right? So with Feature selection and max, and you had this hands on with the coding. Thank you so much, Francisco, for this wonderful demonstration.